Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about work done by constant force. So work, which is represented by W, is the energy transferred to an object when a force acting on the object moves it through a displacement. Work is equal to the magnitude of the applied force times the magnitude of displacement times cos of theta, which is the angle between F and D. Work is a scalar quantity, which means there's no direction associated with it. However, work can be positive or negative, depending on whether work is done by the object or on the object. The SI unit for work is joule, so 1 joule is also equal to 1 newton times meters, which is also equal to 1 kilogram times meter squared per second squared. So positive work is done when the force component is in the same direction as that of the displacement. An example of positive work is when there's zero degrees between force and displacement. So cos of zero degrees would just be one. Positive work increases kinetic energy. An example of positive work is when you lift a box up to the table. So both the applied force and the displacement is in the upwards direction. As for zero work, there's three different cases in which zero work occurs. Number one, when the displacement itself is zero. Number two, when the force is equal to zero. And number three, when the force acting is perpendicular to the displacement of the object. So when there's 90 degrees between force and displacement, we know that cos 90 is zero, and thus that would result in zero work. Lastly, for negative work, the force component is in the opposite direction as that of the displacement. For example, 180 degrees between force and displacement. So cos 180 we know is negative 1. Negative work would lead to decrease in kinetic energy. An example of negative work is gravity doing negative work on the box while it's being lifted up to the table. So the gravitational force is acting in the downwards direction. However, the displacement of the box would be upwards. Okay, so now to visualize this concept. Let's analyze the cos function. As you can see, positive work is done when the angle of theta is between 0 and 90, or between 270 and 360. Cos 180 would be equal to negative 1, so anything between 90 and 270 would be negative work. If theta is exactly equal to 90 degrees, or exactly equal to 270 degrees, that means zero work is done. Some additional notes are that when analyzing the total work done on an object, all forces present must be considered, including friction. The net result of these forces will be either positive, negative, or zero work done on the object. Now that we've covered the theory, let's move on to the Nelson textbook problems. Starting off with number one on page 170, this is section 4.1. It says two ropes pull on a crate toward the left with forces of equal magnitude F causing the crate to move horizontally. Which rope does more work on the crate? Explain. So referring to the figure that they provided us with, the rope that F1 is acting on does more work on the crate. We know this because F1 is completely acting in the horizontal component. Since F1 is in the same direction as change in D, 100% of the force effectively does work on the crate. On the other hand, F2 is at an angle upwards, diagonally. Thus, only a fraction of that force is acting in the horizontal component, which means only a fraction of the work is done on the crate. Moving on to question number two. A torque consists of a small plastic tube connected at the center to one end of a long string. A girl holds the other end of the string and swings the toy in a horizontal, circular path above her head. Is work done on the toy by the string during each revolution? Explain your reasoning. So drawing out your scenario here, you'll see that the acceleration would be a centripetal acceleration towards the center of the circle, whereas the velocity would be in the horizontal perpendicular direction. No work is done on the toy by the string because we know that force is perpendicular to the direction of displacement, since velocity is always perpendicular to centripetal acceleration. Again, we know that theta is equal to 90 degrees in this scenario, and since work is equal to the magnitude of force times the magnitude of displacement times cos theta, cos 90 is equal to zero, thus work is equal to zero. For question number three, a shopper pushes a loaded grocery cart with a force of 12.6 newtons. 
The force makes an angle of 21.8 degrees above the horizontal. Determine the work done on the cart by the shopper as he pushes the cart 14.2 meters. So we know force theta in the magnitude of displacement. You just plug that into the formula for work and you get 166 joules. For question number four, the horse pulls a rider on a sleigh across a snowy horizontal field. The force of the rope is 22.8 newtons and the horse does 9.53 times 10 to the 2 joules of work pulling the sleigh a distance of 52.6 meters. Calculate the angle between the rope and the horizontal. So we know force, magnitude of displacement, which is just distance, as well as work in this scenario, and we're solving for theta. Using the formula for work, isolate for theta, this is equal to inverse cos times work divided by force times displacement, Theta is equal to 37.4 degrees, which is the angle between the rope and the horizontal. For question number 5, a warehouse worker pushes a crate of mass 24 kilograms up a ramp. Assume that the friction between the crate and the ramp can be ignored. Part A says, determine the component of gravitational force directed along the ramp surface. If you recall the problem-solving tip where you rotate the reference frame in order to get the normal force to act upwards, that's what I've done here in the free body diagram. We know mass and theta, and we're solving for the x component of gravitational force. If you look at the free body diagram, you see that the x component is related through the opposite side, thus it's related through sine theta. So fgx is equal to mg sine theta, which is equal to negative 1.2 times 10 to the 2 newtons. Since we let upwards and forwards be positive, the x component of gravitational force would simply be 1.2 times 10 to the 2 newtons in the backwards direction. For part b, calculate the force required to move the crate at a constant speed up the ramp. So when there's a constant speed, we know that net force in the x component must be equal to zero since there's no acceleration. So the net force in the x component would just be equal to the applied force minus the gravitational force's x component. 0 is equal to applied force minus mg sine theta. Isolating for applied force and plugging those numbers in, you get 1.2 times 10 to the 2 newtons forward, as the force required to move the crate at a constant speed up the ramp. For part c, calculate the work done in pushing the crate 23 meters as measured along the ramp. Assume the crate moves at constant velocity. So since we solve for applied force under the circumstances of constant velocity in part b, we know that applied force is now 117.6 newtons. Again, we know mass and we know theta. Just plugging that into the formula for work, we know theta is equal to zero since there's no angle between force and displacement in this scenario. Solving for that, you get that the work is 2.7 times 10 to the 3 joules. Lastly, for part d, Assume the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the ramp is mu k equal to 0 0.25. Calculate the work done on the crate by the worker and by friction, and calculate the total work done as the worker pushes the crate 16 meters up the ramp. So first solving for the work done by the worker, we know this is equal to the work done by the applied force. Analyzing the free body diagram here on the right, we know the applied force must be equal to the x component of the gravitational force plus the frictional force. However, since these are in opposing directions, letting upwards in the direction of applied force be positive. The vector of applied force would be equal to the negative vector of the frictional force plus the x component of the gravitational force. So we know that the work done by the worker would be equal to negative of the work done by gravity plus negative of the work done by friction. So this would be equal to negative fg sine theta, change in d. Cos theta in this case cancels out to be negative 1, since the force is acting in opposing direction of applied force. And then minus ff, change in d, cos theta again cancels to negative 1 because opposing directions. This simplifies to mg sine theta change in d plus mu k mg cos theta change in d. Note that mg cos theta is equal to fn, since that's what we solved for on the right here, and we know that mg sine theta is actually equal to the x component of the gravitational force, because the x component is the opposite side relative to theta. So solving for that, plugging the numbers in, we get that the work done by the worker is 2.7 times 10 to the 3 joules. When solving for the work done by friction, 
Again, we solved for normal force to be equal to mg cos theta. We know that theta in this case would be 180 degrees, and we know that cos 180 is negative 1. So work done by fractions equal to negative mu k mg cos theta times change in displacement. Calculating this, work done by friction is negative 8.1 times 10 to the 2 joules. Lastly, solving for the total work, so you add the work done by the worker plus the work done by friction. So that's 2,696.36 joules minus 814.76 joules. Applying 2 sig fix, this is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the 3 joules. Now for the final question, number 6. A boy and a girl pull and push a crate along an icy horizontal surface, moving at 13 meters at a constant speed. The boy exerts 75 newtons of force at an angle of 32 degrees above the horizontal. The girl exerts a force, 75 newtons, at an angle of 22 degrees above the horizontal. Calculate the total work done by the boy and the girl together. So we know the magnitude of displacement, and we know the force of the boy and the force of the girl. So the net work would just be equal to the work of the boy plus the work of the girl. Applying the theory, we know work is equal to F change in D cos theta. So the force of the boy times the magnitude of displacement times cos theta plus the force of the girl times the magnitude of displacement times cos theta should be equal to the total work done by the boy and the girl. Plug in the numbers in that we already know. Rounding to two sig figs, the work done is 1.7 times 10 to the 3 joules. That wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned for next video to learn about kinetic energy and the energy work theorem.